Hello and welcome to a very special Team 33. I'm Jonathan Higgins and on the phone we have Raf Diallo. And most importantly, this is a big, big uh, guest of mine and a kind of a childhood dream come through to speak to one of my heroes from a kid. Grew up a Liverpool supporter and particularly that uh, treble win, winning season for Liverpool um, kind of kicked off and fell in love back in the, uh, with the game again. I'm delighted to be joined by Marcus Babel. Good morning, Bob. Morning, Marcus. Great for you to join us. Good morning. How are you? I'm not so bad. I'm not so bad. Um, we'll get. We'll get. You know, we'll get kick started here. I'm going to going to focus primarily on your Liverpool days, and Raf is going to take over afterwards to to talk about all your many adventures afterwards. So, you you know, you come back, you join Liverpool just as the kind of the tide of the crest turns around. You know, Jared Hulier is he's starting to kind of get his shape on the side, and then he, he, you kind of join. You know, you join your big friend Didi Haman, I believe. And you know, just tell us about that how that move to Liverpool came about, and you know, obviously there was reported interest. From from Real Madrid, you know, a lot of you know, when you were leaving Bayern Munich, there was a lot of other teams interested in you. What was it that kind of attracted you to join Liverpool at the time? Um, yeah, it was quite simple because uh, since I was a kid, I was always following the the Premier League and uh, the English Football League, and because we always saw on a Sunday, uh, yeah, a couple of clips from from the English League, and I don't know why. But I was always fascinated from from uh, from, this, from this league, and then I had the luck to play the European Championship uh, in England, '96, and I got the, the atmosphere in the stadium. And then I was for me clear: if if I go away from Bayern Munich, that is the only country where I go is England. And uh, yeah, and then I had the luck that Liverpool was interested. And to be fair, there wasn't the worst change for that. Did. <laughs> there was. A fantastic time. Um, I only could play for one year, but uh, this season was unbelievable. I think I played my best season ever in my career, and uh, I enjoyed it so much to play for this fantastic club. And yeah, it was a great experience because yeah, I played together with with great players, uh, Didi Haman, uh, of course, the German guy as well, but also Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, Gary McAllister, Sammy Vipier. And uh, yeah, and we had the luck that to that we win a couple of trophies, so it was the enjoyment even more. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, just to rewind back, it was, it was a phenomenal season. Really, we ended up Liverpool. We ended up winning a cup treble. It was the FA Cup, the Worthington Cup, as we call it at the time, hence AKA the League Cup, the FA Cup, and qualification for the Champions League. And it really was a helter belter season. And you know, everybody talks at the moment about fixture congestion and all that and, uh, and how many games players had to play but your, your stats that season were incredible like I believe you played like um, 60 games out of a 63 uh, game season with, and scoring 6 goals in the process it really was, was a crazy crazy phenomenal season wasn't it? Yeah it was uh, yeah, to be fair quite hard <laughs> it wasn't, I can imagine it wasn't so. really because the pace in England is different to Germany it's, it's much harder Pace is higher, um, so it wasn't it wasn't easy. But uh, we had a, a fantastic fitness coach in this time, um, in the Gerard Rollier. He always found a, a, a good team for for yeah for this for the games. And yeah, to be fair, I had luck. I played most of the games, and uh, yeah, it was, it was hard. But uh, you know, if you in the end of the season, if you have something in your hands. Then uh, the, the, the tiredness is, is away, and you're just happy and celebrating. And yeah, and it's a, a, yeah, it's, it wasn't easy, but I enjoyed it so much because uh, yeah, if you play Anfield, if you play in the all, uh, all other stadiums in England, there's always uh, this is always was for me always special, and uh, I forgot the tiredness. Very good. Yeah, well, you know, we've seen, per, if we look at Liverpool, for example, we've seen a number of players come in, you know, as big money signings, big name signings, and take a couple of months to adapt to the Premier League. You were unique in the fact that you, you bedded in straight away, like you pretty much replaced Jimmy Carragher at right back, made that right back position your own, and you, settle, you settled in. Like, you know, you... I think you know while your time we'll we'll speak about it a bit a bit more later on um, why you know unfortunately your time was cut short a bit at Liverpool but you know you embedded yourself straight away into the supporters straight away you embedded yourself into the culture of the club and I suppose it helped with some of the big goals that you scored you know scoring in a, in a European Cup final in your homeland for the club the opening goal of that crazy five four game against Alaves you know you scored you scored in the derby at Goodison you know you just epitomised the spirit of the club straight away and I suppose you know speaking to a couple of Liverpool supporters 
supporters last night just preparing for this interview. You know, everybody kind of speaks about that huge smile you had in face, you know, that crazy fists up um, celebration afterwards when you scored a goal or a big move. It was, how did you feel? Like, did you, did you, like everybody speaks in about the magical ni- uh, nights at Anfield. How did you, how did you, how special did that make you feel? The fact that supporters loved you pretty much and then you were able to enjoy some great European nights at the club as well. Yeah, first of all, uh, yeah, I have to say thank you. If, if they still uh, don't forget me, this is uh, always a good sign. To be fair, uh, in the beginning, it was also difficult for me. With the first two, three games, uh, yeah, I stopped uh, uh, by every challenge because I was thinking there's a foul, but the referee always said, come on, keep going, keep going. And the pace was higher. It was harder than normally in the Bundesliga in Germany. So and this is then a true story. I was looking in the mirror and said, Marcus, now you have two options. So you go home or, or you adapt this game, you know, because uh, this, this is how it is. So you, you have to, you have these two options because Liverpool expect something for you. They pay a good money and uh, yeah, they want to see your best performance. And uh, I couldn't do it in the first uh, two, three, four, five games. I, don't, I can't remember how many games it was. But after this, um, I decided to stay because uh, I wanted to stay. And from this moment on, I was yeah, I was yeah, playing well. And then, uh, of course, you need a bit luck on your side that you yeah, score in the right moment, uh, um, an important goal, or you do a, a good tackle in, uh, in the right moment. And uh, yeah, I had this luck on my side, and uh, my confidence was always going higher and higher and higher. My, my my standing in the, the team, I could feel it. It's always getting higher and higher and higher. So, and then, uh, yeah, I think that then we found also uh, a side in important games with Sammy Hippie, Stefano Shaw in the, the center back, me as a right back, and Terrega on the left back, and we did the Harman in front. And then I think, yeah, we, we, we defend well. We, we also could score goals with, with Michael and Eno Hersky. And yeah, then we, we, we were on, on fire. And, uh, of course, for the league, it was not good enough. We finished third. But to be fair, it wasn't, wasn't so bad because yeah, if you win the, the FA Cup, the, the League Cup and the European Cup, then it's, I think the, the season not so bad. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, it's a season that, you know, I think all Liverpool fans will, will look back onto the memories, particularly that roller coaster towards the end where there seemed to be one big game after, after another big game. It was one cup final, it was another cup final, it was then playing Charlton the last day of the season, needing to win to, to qualify for the Champions League. It was crazy. But, you know, speaking of big, big games at Liverpool, and I suppose this is one where you might have, you know, twisted uh, preferences or, or whatnot, you know, two of your former clubs go head to head now in the Champions League. It's, I think it's a game I can safely say that in captures absolutely everybody in the football world. You know, you have the the German clubs, Liverpool, coming uh, facing the, the, your powerhouse of former club, Bayern Munich. You know, how how looking forward to this tie are you? And uh, I'm going to have to push you in on who you want to win. Well, difficult to say because I played 16 years for Bayern Munich. Uh, started with 10 years in the, in the years from Bayern Munich. Played six years as a professional. Played. Only one year or one season for, for Liverpool, but my heart is also <laughs> in Liverpool. Um, so for me, it's a good situation because it doesn't matter who is winning. I'm, I'm happy because uh, if Liverpool comes through, I'm really happy for, for Liverpool. If Bayern comes through, I'm happy for Bayern. So it's difficult to say uh, where my heart is more because uh, even also Bayern Munich, it was a fantastic time. I, I learned so many things uh, in this club. Um, Helped me to 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 come to a national team player, um, won titles with with this club, uh, also like with Liverpool. So for me, difficult to say. I'm really looking forward for, to this game because for me, a top two top teams playing each other. This is, uh, yeah, I would say, a 50-50 game because uh, maybe uh, Liverpool has a little bit more talent, but Bayern um, Munich has a little bit more experience. So very interesting game, and I'm really as a football support, I'm really looking forward to this game. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, the the Bayern thing actually just wanted to actually bring it up because um, of course you were a young boy when you joined the club, but it was actually just shortly after Bayern's three in a row in the European Cup. Um, Obviously, you were probably too young to have first-hand memories. I think you would have been around two when they won the first one and four when they won the second, but. During the eighties, was the afterglow of that victory? Could you still feel it? Those three European cups. 
Yeah, this is, yeah, it was a little bit before my time, but uh, I know that all Germans say it was so difficult to play. Uh, not even in Liverpool, also all England, you know, it was always very, very difficult to play there because they were the at home or uh, yeah, uh, top class uh, with the supporters in the back. Very, very difficult because the, yeah, in this time the, the supporters wasn't like like now uh, because now Bayern Munich is playing in front or every home game in front of uh, 78,000 people. In this time you played at home and maybe for 15, 20,000 people. Then you come to England and there was always full. The stadiums were full. Um, it was a fantastic atmosphere. They were always yeah, a bit shocked if they had to play there because the, the pressure from the, from the people from the stand that was so high that uh, yeah, most of the German teams uh, yeah, lost, lost the case uh, away from home uh, in England. It was very difficult to win for them. Yeah, brilliant. And just to touch on, you know, Klopp, you know, you know, he's encaptured the nation, pretty much the football and world, particularly in the Premier League now. I think, you know, even rival fans, you know, have to admire his enthusiasm, his style of football. But just how is Klopp, you know, what what is the, the thought process of, of Klopp in, in Germany? Obviously, you know, people will still look back on the, the Mines and, and the Dortmund days, but is he is he as much loved as he is in England and other footballing countries as he is back home in Germany? Do people still appreciate his style of football? Yeah, of course. Of course. He had a fantastic time in Mainz. Then he moved to a big club uh, like Borussia Dortmund. And if you stay for seven years for Borussia Dortmund, then you did an uh, uh, unbelievable job. And Klopp, uh, the good thing is with him, he is uh, 100% autistic. He is not playing something. He is, it is him. And this is also great to see uh, for me how he brought this club to a different level. So now Liverpool is one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, so uh, if, uh, maybe, maybe to my time, if you could decide between Manchester United, Arsenal, and Liverpool, I think most of the players would go to Man United or, or Arsenal, and the, the third option is maybe Liverpool. So now it's different, you know. If you have the choice to go to Liverpool, Arsenal, or Man United, I would say yeah, the first choice is, is, is I think, uh, Liverpool, because with Jurgen Klopp, uh, with the style of football, how he is playing, um, with, with Anfield, so this is uh, a big argument now for the players uh, to come, and um, this is this is his job because he he brought a spirit in the club, he brought he made the, the the club bigger than he was before, and uh, yeah, and the style how they played is uh, is fantastic. Even I, as a football supporter, I love to watch these games because this is uh, spectacular. This is uh, yeah, this is great to watch. Um, of course, he hasn't won uh, a big title now for this club. It is also important if you want to go to the next step. But I'm sure it will come. Um, I'm really crossing the finger for him that he wins the league or yeah, win, win uh, a, a, a cup. But because he's, he's a fantastic coach and he is 100% Jürgen Klopp, he's not playing something. He is how he is. And uh, he brought, in my eyes, the club on a different level. Brilliant. You know, you touched on it a little bit there with you know Klopp's style of football, which has grabbed the attention. If you can rewind back to your own career, do you think he's a player that you would have, you as a manager, you know, you know, would you have enjoyed playing under him as a manager with that style of football? You know, you know, I spoke about earlier about how you captured the Liverpool fans. You know, with your spirit and that included, you know, your bombs down the wing and you know six goals isn't quite impressive for fullback, particularly in probably a little bit more of a defensive style under Jared Hulier. We've seen at the moment, you know, the fullbacks. In, Liver in Klopp's Liverpool, you know, they provide a lot of uh, width, they provide, they're constantly attacking forward. You look at the number of assists both full-backs have got. Is that, is that a style that you would have, uh, you know, you would have enjoyed playing on, under yourself? Would you have liked to play it under a manager like Jorgen Klopp? <laughs> I would say I was a little bit playing like uh, this style for <laughs> Klopp because I love to play forward. I wasn't uh, yeah, the defender who's always standing in the back and just say, uh, don't, uh, don't consider a goal about your side. So I always wanted to play forward because I was tackling not the worst. So, um, yeah, of course, you, you know, I would be the exact coach for my style of football. And, um, yeah, I played against him. Not uh, He wasn't a coach at this time. I played against him. To be fair, he wasn't the best footballer. But as a coach, he was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there was, there was exactly what I wish a, a, a coach would tell me. But 
to be fair, uh, 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 what my hit said, or also I said, ah, oh, they, they let me go. They didn't say a word if I yeah, attacked the, the right side. And uh, they never said, hey, you have to stay in the back. So uh, I, had, yeah, I had no problems with my coaches. Yeah, and uh, currently you're um, you're coaching in Australia, as we mentioned at the top, and you're with Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, you spoke about the way Klopp brings the spirit into the club, um, and also I guess the, his philosophy and everything else. Um, for you, what's the what's uh, what route do you generally take to try and imprint your own ideas into a club or into a team that you've taken over? Yeah, the, 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 the biggest problem is uh, the quality. <laughs> so your club has different kind of player that I have now. So uh, yeah, if you if you don't have this this, this quality, then it's uh, very difficult to to press uh, uh, ninety minutes, especially here in the summer. You have uh, yeah, thirty five, nearly forty degrees, and uh, uh, you can't press ninety minutes uh, again because uh, the team got very tired very quickly. Um, so you have to find a, a different a different style of football. Of course, uh, we, especially in the winter time. You want to play a style, yeah, uh, uh, but not because Jürgen Klopp is doing this, because this is uh, what I want to see. But also, uh, in the summertime, yeah, we want to have a uh, ball position. Now we want to keep the ball, because then uh, uh, to recover if you have the ball. Um, but uh, it's also a quality thing, you know. I don't have the best players. You know, my, my salary cap is uh, three and a half million. So this is, I think, uh, I, I don't know if, if one player... I think it's one player from Liverpool who is earning this maybe maybe uh, many many years more or pounds. Uh, so you see the difference, you know. I, I have to work with my players, and I really enjoy it to work with them. But it's, it's uh, very difficult to play a style. Or everyone is saying, yeah, Pep Guardiola is uh, tiki taka. It looks great, yeah, but you need to play for for this, and I don't have that. Yeah, and the club currently where you're at, um, I think I believe you have a new stadium and new training ground, all kind of within the plan as well. Um, so I guess you're there, kind of at an exciting time where there's a sense of change as well. Yeah, this, uh, this is the good thing is uh, I see the picture in, uh, in, in the background, you know, because in this season I only could brought in or I brought in three players, so the rest was was there. So I have to to work with these players uh, who took the old coach in. Um, but again, I, I enjoy to work with them. But next season we will have a, a different team where we have uh, a realistic chance to to fight for the title. Uh, this season is not possible because the quality is not good enough. But it is like it is. Uh, I love my job. I love to be here. Uh, I work with great people together, and this is for me uh, yeah, the most important thing. This is what I enjoy. And to be fair, here in Australia, a new experience also for me. Um, I work with great people together and uh, yeah, great experience. So I, I love it to be here and uh, now I'm looking forward for the game because this is, I think, one of the games uh, I stay middle of the night, I get up and watch this game. Yeah, um, I suppose one of the reasons we did want to chat to you as well, um, it was probably a remarkable thing from your own career and I, I guess it's remarkable how you were able to come through it eventually and come back and play, but... This is the uh, Gian Barre syndrome, which uh, probably wouldn't be particularly well known to people. But um, this struck after that great season, first season you had with Liverpool. And when you look at the statistics, one in 10 sufferers die. Um, f- can you maybe just take us through the first symptoms when you first, uh, when you first began to realise there was something wrong with you? Yeah, it was uh, the first time um, was to play the game against the Bayern Munich in the Super Cup. If we played against the Champions League winner, you can you know, uh, winner uh, each other. So in this game, I feel really, really tired. Um, went to the Bayern Munich doc because I uh, you know him. He's uh, one of the best doctors in uh, in Europe. This, yeah, uh, Wolfhart, isn't it? Yeah, Dr. Müller Wolfhart, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And was talking to him that I'm not feeling well, and he said, "Yeah, you look not good." So come to Munich. We have some tests, and we did the tests, and uh, he said, "Oh." It looks not good. Um, stay in Munich, and then uh, there was a there was a virus. What I had, um, and we were thinking, okay, the virus is gone. I came back to Liverpool, but still, I was yeah, was very tired. Uh, I couldn't. I had problems to walk. I had no energy, no power. 
and um, yeah, went back to Munich and said, uh, I still feel not well. Then I went to another doctor and I told him my symptoms, what I have. Uh, he was listening to 30 seconds that yeah, you have Kugler Barre syndrome. I said, What is this? I never heard this before. But yeah, you have to stay. And yeah, and in the end, so I couldn't walk anymore. So had, uh, every night uh, they wake me up after two hours to, because, you know, breathe muscle is also, uh, yeah, in danger. You know, you have to, also can stop. And, but I had luck. I had luck uh, uh, in this time. It wasn't too worse. So it was worse, but it wasn't too worse. Um, I was in a special rehab place with five other guys. They had the same as uh, what I had. And, yeah, they were sitting in the wheelchair. They couldn't walk. They had... Um, Nappies on because they couldn't control anything anymore. So, uh, really tough periods, very hard periods. Um, to be fair, I never came back to 100% because, um, yeah, my, yeah, my, my lifestyle after this wasn't uh, professional anymore. And, um, yeah, and, uh, uh, and, and in the end, so I had to decide, okay, stay in England or go back to Germany. I decided to go back to Germany and to be fair, it wasn't, a, uh, wasn't a, a, a bad decision because I went to Stuttgart, had the luck to, to win the title with them. Uh, uh, again, after this, I retired, started my coaching um, time as assistant. And yeah, and now I'm Sydney and uh, yeah, if you told me this... Uh, Ten years ago, then I would say, yeah, uh, I can't believe this, but so I do come through. I have a fantastic experience and had this bit bad time in, in my in my head, but uh, I'm a positive type and uh, I'm always looking forward. And more, now I can more or I have a better feeling for for injured players who have three bad injuries because I know how hard it is to come back. Um, and what I said, I never came back to one hundred percent. Only yeah, came to ninety percent back, and uh, but still had the had the luck to win the German league. Yeah, in my career. there was a story I think that uh, it got so worrying at one point. Did a priest visit you in a hospital, um, kind of to give prayers and things? And then there was another person as well, um, that maybe Irish people would know a bit better. But a musician called Christa Berg. Apparently, there were stories that he visited you in hospital as well. I'm not sure how well you remember yeah. all of this. He visited. He visited me. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem. Is you have a virus in your body, and your you, your body fight against this virus with, with the with the um, antibodies, and they give you uh, synthetic antibodies. So you get three days. Uh, your whole body is full of antibodies, and then they hope that the the, the body will say, "Okay, now I know. I understand. The virus is done. Uh, so now I can't stop t- to produce." Because your nerves, they're not uh, sending the signals to your muscles, and uh, all, all muscles uh, stop to work. So my muscles were gone. So in my best time, uh, if I as a player, I was uh, 85 kilos. So if uh, I was in the hospital, I was 72. So I looked not really good um, because I lost all my muscles. And um, yeah, that was was great. Christy Berg played a concert in, uh, in Munich and. Uh, uh, I know him, and he, yeah, he found out where I am, and, and <laughs> the nurse, nurse really come, uh, comes to my room and said, listen, uh, there's a Christy Bird in front of the door, can I let him in? I said, yeah, of course, and he came in, and uh, yeah, we had a, for one hour, we had a great chat, and um, yeah, he wished all the best, and um, yeah, it was a, was a great sign from, from Chris, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose a final one on that as well. Um, Didi Haman was very helpful as well, especially at the beginning with uh, the doctor recommendation as well, because without that, maybe who knows? Yeah, he, he, he told me. Uh, he told me uh, a doctor, and uh, and then I, if I went to Munich, I said I, I don't know if Doctor Merovo is the right one. So and I called him and went to him, and it was the right decision. He was exactly the right man for for this what I had and. Um, yeah, I was very happy, and again, I had so much luck. Uh, this is a, a really awful uh, illness, and uh, I had luck. Uh, it was worse, but it wasn't too worse. And uh, what I said, I saw so many other guys uh, had not this much luck, and they always were thinking I got something special, but you can't give something special in this moment. So this is the, the same things for they got, uh, I got it. 
And um, yeah, it was very frustrating for them uh, to see uh, I stay in a better condition there. The good thing was my age. I was professional footballer, so in the way, if they showed me what I have to do, yeah, after one two times, I couldn't, I could do it. Um, and then most of the people they were over 40, 50, so they had more problems, uh, yeah, uh, uh, to, to do the, all the exercises. And um, so it was my luck. And um, again, it was. It wasn't a, uh, normally I say that I don't need this experience normally, but yeah, this happened. And that's positive why I, I took so many things out of this period. Uh, the only thing is it was for me, uh, maybe three years later, when I had three more seasons with Liverpool in my legs, then, uh, then I had more enjoyment there. But it is not like this. Uh, this season was, what I said, was my best season in my career. And the club is uh, so deep in my heart, and um, I never forget what that what it did to me, especially in this time. And yeah, it was a great enjoyment. Yeah, and I suppose a final point as well. At the beginning, you you said um, I guess it was playing in Euro '96 helped influence and bring you over to England because you you tasted the atmosphere at the time when you were in England for that tournament. Um, one thing we probably didn't mention, Germany won it um, and it was obviously a great achievement and of course you had that great game against England which the English still play the replays of all the chances they missed, the penalties they missed. I think Gar- Gareth Southgate of course was uh, involved I think in the penalty miss at the end as well. Um, your memories of that game and I guess the final against Czech Republic um, before we let you go. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, also an unbelievable uh, uh, experience because uh, in our country, uh, no one expects something from us. So they said, okay, if they pass the group stage, then is everything fine. And for me, it was clear uh, we win this tournament because uh, we had a really good side and, and top players in, in our team. And I was really surprised that no one expects something from us. And and then we had a really, really good team spirit in the team. Um, it was a great atmosphere. We had a, a good mix between uh, older guys and younger ones, and uh, who are the, the chefs uh, on the pitch with Matthias Sammer, Jürgen Klinsmann, uh, Stefan Kunz, um, experienced guys, and uh, but also the fight of the workers with Dieter Heitz, me, um, Christian Siege. So it was a really, really good mix, and. Um, and for me, it was clear it was, it was, uh, we win this tournament. And uh, I think I wasn't alone with this thinking. <laughs> so, uh, and then, yeah, we come in the right flow. And we were there. You know, we had the moments and we took the moments. So, um, and yeah, and then if you, if you play in the old Wembley, um, first I was thinking if we had the training before, uh, what the hell is this? Uh, I was expecting a spectacular stadium, but then I saw how, how old it is, and um, yeah, you would say uh, no quality. But then the next day, if we played against England, so uh, then I could understand. That, okay, this is done. Right now I understand what they mean. And it was an at- unbelievable atmosphere in the stadium. It was. I couldn't concentrate me on this game because uh, the supporters, the English supporters, they were singing for one or twenty minutes. So I was just listening what they're singing. Uh, it was so fantastic, and it was very, very difficult to concentrate you on, on the game. And, and yeah, and to be fair, we had the luck in the penalty kick, and yeah, we took this flow in the final. We were a big struggle against Czech Republic because. Yeah, everyone expected that we win this game, but uh, you saw there was a fantastic team what they had with uh, Pavel Nedved, uh, Patrick Berger, uh, Poporski, uh, Kuka. It was a really, really good side. And yeah, and also there with the golden goal, it was uh, yeah, a fantastic enjoyment for us if we scored the goal. Brilliantly, and, and finally, just before we let you go, Marcus, I just want to just to touch back to your time, you know, in the Premier League, and just look at the current. Um, we have a fantastic title race at the moment. Obviously, I suppose the two of us are probably a little bit biased in who we want to win. But how do you see the, this battle coming along? Obviously, Liverpool had that little bit of a stutter. They seem to be back on form with the win at the weekend, and Man City just look like a machine at the moment. Another, you know, thumping of, of Chelsea at, at the weekend. How do you see this this title race going? And can you can you can you predict a winner yet, or is it too early for you? I think this, this Bayern Munich game is a very, very important uh, game, not only for Liverpool, also for Bayern Munich, but uh, you're asking me about the title race for, for Liverpool. Well, yeah, we, and just in the win, title we, race we as well. They can win this, this game, so I think they can get a, a push for the rest of the season, because uh, 
yeah, the pressure is there. They don't have the experience to stay on top of the table. They were always second or third. They were always trying to, to catch someone, but now they're top of the table. You have a concurrent with Man City that don't yeah, give points up. They had the problems in the December. Liverpool had now a little bit of problems in the January. But I think this Bayern Munich game is a very, very important game for the rest of the season. If they can beat Bayern Munich, I, can, I, I think they can go in a flow that uh, yeah, have the big luck on, on their side. Uh, because it's just difficult to say. Man City is a top team. Liverpool is a top team. You need this big luck on your side. You know, you need uh, the injured players. Not many uh, players get injured. You know, the, 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 the right uh, opposite side to the right time. So you need this big luck on, on your side. And I think you can get it if you if you win this, this game uh, against Bayern Munich. Absolutely. Well, listen, Marcus, thank you so much for that. It was a pleasure to hear back on your, your no career, career and all your ventures. Thanks very much. And we wish you all the best in your, in your coaching role. And who knows, we, we might see you back coaching in Europe again or even better coaching the Premier League again. And we'll, we'll all look forward to that. Thank you so much. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much.